Hello everyone, happy Saturday, and we are back for another paper making session here. Um, we're gonna go on, we're gonna keep on building on top of the paper that we made in our very first session. So I'm continuing in the vat that I had, and I'm gonna add some more of our cream papers that we were using. But this time I wanna add, we're gonna do some recycled paper, hashtag, post-consumer art um, and but I'm gonna chop this up it's actually a toilet paper roll I've been saving all kind of things of this brown bag and I'm just putting a, a tissue box in there and paper towel rolls so we can use all that so just get yourself a little bag and just toss a lot of those kind of papers in there we'll be reusing them so you just unroll the roll, you know, at one of the edges. And then we're just gonna tear this up. Now, I'm gonna only, I wanna do this very loose because I want it to show as inclusions in our actual paper. So we're moving on and just kind of putting like a little inclusion in the paper. And inclusions are anything that we're putting in there that will stay separate from the pulp. So we'll look at it and we'll be able to see if it's string, if it's, you know, botanical materials, if it's other paper. So I'm going to only put about, um, move this to the side right now. I'm going to use about seven fifths of a liter. So, you know, 0.75, so three quarters of a liter. Not as much water because I just want to get this broken down loosely. So I'll still have like these different chunks that will go in with our white paper. If I were to blend this down all the way, it would turn more into like a tan color. And then when I put it with the white, it would mix and it would just create a sort of lighter shade, a little slightly darker shade. But this we're just going to kind of and then stop it, look at it. is going to be harder to break up anyway because it's the tough, tougher sort of wood pulp paper so I really want to make sure I'm keeping sort of pieces so I'm gonna break it down a little bit more so just pulsate it a few times and then stop I'd say that's pretty good yeah because I want to I want to keep these pieces so it'll float in our paper so I'm gonna take that and just kind of put it into a separate dish here to the side and then we're going to go ahead and blend up our white calligraphy paper so let's get some more water in here so I'm gonna go to the, the leader and Go ahead and put some of this in there. Probably could use a little bit more. So I think that was just four sheets. Let me get four more sheets. It looks like that's pretty good. So I still had some of the um, sort of the ochre color pulp in here, which is a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this batch in with it. And it'll just slightly color it, just a little bit. That's one way you can get your different color pulps is by using different paper colors and then letting them blend. So this will end up being more of kind of like an oatmeal color. And then what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna pull, just start with a little bit and just start distributing it because I want to kind of control how much is in there I don't really want it. I want it to be flex so if you just put a little bit in at a time you can kind of see what we have here all right so I'm gonna go with the square frame last um, the first time we did it I was using this, you know, the five by seven, but I think I'm gonna go, I guess this is like a five by five. 
and I'm gonna show you just a few different things we can do when we're actually cooching the paper. So everything is wet, it's ready to go. Go down, pick it up, and just kind of shake it a little bit as it drains. This is gonna drain slower because I made the paper thicker. And you can see the nice little bits of pieces in there, which is really cool. Gives it that sort of that oatmeal feeling to it. So we're gonna, once again, roll it. You'll hear that snap. And you get a really beautiful piece of paper. So now we're starting to put inclusions in there. You can use everything. You could actually use some junk mail. Um, it could be all color, junk mail, tear it up into small pieces, and that'll go in your, your paper. Hello, we are back for another Saturday. Yay. Oh my goodness. <gasps> paper making today was amazing. So these are the papers that we made today. And, um, here again on our Pellon pulls right off. It, it stays on here till you're ready to take it off. And the beautiful thing about the Pellon is it does help it to stay flat. So it's a little bit of an expense, but you use it over and over and over and over again. And it's worth its weight in gold to get your paper nice and flat and, you know, to really give it that nice, you know, hand paper making vibe. You get the nice decal around the edge, which is super beautiful. We get the texture, but at the same time, it's nice and flat. And uh, this is our paper that we used, the um, the calligraphy paper. I'm using the in the in the natural, the Dazio, and that's the one that's 60 or 100 sheets, depending on which pack you get. The 60 sheet, the paper's a little thicker. So it's 60 in the pack for like $5 and the hundred, the paper's a little thinner and it's the same five or $6. So we're using that cause that's a traditional rice paper, you know, like the Asian fiber. So it's good for making a nice thin paper. Um, and you know, it's beautiful for what we're doing. And then this is the one that we put the roll. You saw me, um, tear up some of our bathroom tissue rolls. We hashtag post-consumer art. Like how many of those that we've thrown away? Save them because they make beautiful texture in the paper. So you can see they're just embedded in there. They're just very subtle, but beautiful. It's hard, you know, you can use it to make paper, but it won't be very, um, it won't be very strong because this is made from wood pulp and wood pulp is just not as strong as natural fibers, but I love using it as an inclusion and we'll be working with this a lot of different ways. But I think, you know, to move forward into our next paper making session where today we you were using what you call inclusion. So you're putting something in your pulp and the something that you put in, you're able to see it because it's not beaten up as finely as the paper pulp. So that's the idea of inclusions. This is crazy. Oh, love it. So this paper was used today in, in our collage. Um, so what I did is I stamped. This is the same paper here. I stamped it with the new stamps that have released on the 28th. So I used these and stamped the paper. So beautiful. This is just the Sumi ink. And look at that. We've got beautiful texture. This stamp is another one of the Cuba um, style inspired stamps. And um, you can even look at the back. There was very little bleed through and we're using Sumi ink. It just goes to show you how sustainable this paper is. So, um, yeah, so I, um, this is our card. I have a thinner border that's also comes along with these. And so I stamped that. So I use the full, the stamp here, um, across. So it was six. And then this was a narrower one. This comes in the sets. And so this one I stamped as a border. You could, you could stamp it as an overall pattern. There's so much you can do with these stamps. The whole set, if you're just hearing about them, like if you didn't some kind of way get the launch from last week, these are, um, 
All the stamps are in the set. There are two sets of them, and I think there are four stamps in a set. Um, and all of them are different and will create a different pattern, and they work beautifully together to create this sort of swooza cloth. So I love these. Um, and these will go with some of the other stamps that, you know, we the first, my first release. I'm all these, I'm making all of these, they're all designed to work together, you know, to just do some amazing um, Kuba and Swooza cloth because there are really no stamps out there that get you these, these kind of patterns. And these patterns have been loved for ages with interior designers. And no matter what sort of eclectic um, space you'll see, if it's Asian, European, you know, South America, whatever, you always you know, like we'll see a bit of the Sousa cloth. It could be in a pillow. It could be in some artwork. It's just a classic pattern uh, of geometry and which is why I love them. So I tore this piece here and that became the foundation for um, the page. So I started off doing just a large sort of ink expression on the paper to activate it using my Sumi ink and brush. Um, I knew I just wanted a lot of movement on there. Uh, this pattern just reminds me sort of a jazz kind of aesthetic or feel, you know, I don't know, it always has. And so just a lot of movement and just very kinetic. So I started by just putting a very kinetic expression on the, um, the paper, our, our foundation. And then from there, I, I knew that I wanted to do this. Um, so I did that while this was drying and I pulled some papers that I had that I felt really worked well with the neutrals of this paper, but I also went into my mudlarker stash and I wanted to use this, this shell. And, um, it really, the, the colors of the shell really, really drove the, um, the colors that I was going to use here in, in our inspiration card. And so I find I always have a tendency to start with my mudlarkers piece. And then that helps me to build my palette, build the direction of the work. Yet I still keep it very intuitive. So, you know, it's, it's still about intuitive collage and that kind of thing. But that's how I start. I start with the actual found object. So this just had so many, just the gray and cream and white tones in it. Um, I got some of this paper that's been gifted to me by one of you guys here, you know, the Premier Yvonne. Thank you so much. I love this paper and we'll be duping this paper. We will definitely be duping this paper. So I know it's not an easy paper to find, but hang with me and coming up, we I'll show you how to make that paper. So just keep on practicing with the, with the papers and what we're doing. And we're going to get there as well. I also had some of this handmade paper um, that I've had for a while. It's very thin. Um, it's like a straw paper. It's called straw paper. You can see almost those little pieces of straw in there. Um, love the new, how neutral it is. And so when I laid it down, I could also see the scripting through on this one as well. Um, and you know, I, I, I like that. And even this paper, we can see the scripting through it. So activating that surface still is allowing us to see, you know, the layers. And so you get the idea of layers and levels to the work. So then I put this down, felt that worked beautifully there. And, you know, the opposite of this visual texture and this actual tactile, tangible texture, um, I feel really opposed to each other nicely. And I use, here, can I use the white glue? You can see this thing is on here. It's not coming off. This is, it's on there. I am, like I said, I probably still will be doing some, you know, some sewing, you know, stitching and what have you. But I actually took and wrapped the shell in some of this fiber. So it almost was like it got caught in a net or some seaweed or something like that. I like the look of it. And because this is a very high, strong texture paper, wrapping that around the shell also helps to hold it in place. So when you're thinking about attaching things, also think about the papers and things that you're using around it and how can you use those elements as a way to secure um, our mudlarking finds. So 
there's lots of very creative ways to secure things without necessarily using, you know, feeling that you all ha it has to rely on the glue or relying on sewing. Those things can be a part of it, but they don't have to be. So this is on here well. That won't come off. Um, as I was laying these down, I had this black in the center and I felt like I wanted to make sure I had some, some contrast there. So I used the white Posca pen and I did my graffiti style, um, of scripting. You can see it's very angular and I love this and it just is jazzy. It goes with this pattern. It's very geometric it, as opposed to being, um, curve and circular like my scripting you can see it's very angular it's very geometric and i feel like that goes so nicely with um with the pattern we created and then when i was done it still had a little space down here and i felt like i wanted to do something and i had pulled this paper out it's in a green with a silver um and this is paper that you can purchase um with the asian characters on it and you know, I like the silver. I, I like that little bit of green. Something about it. It, 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 it's neutral, but it's it's a color, and I felt like it worked beautifully with the with the creams and what have you. So I put that down, and I like the silver because this is a really cool palette, and the silver just offered that bit of cool tone to the work. So um, I, I definitely like the way this this card turned out. And I'm really liking how they just all are flowing together now. Each is so different. And each has been inspired by the little mud you know, the, the found object, the mud lark piece. Here again, this is on here. That nail is on there, but using the papers to hold it in place. Really love this one too. And this one. It's funny how they work together and they're very different at the same time. And that's because you're the one making it. I'm the one making it. So our aesthetic is gonna carry through the cards and really be a part of what makes the cards work together um, and really begin to create this storyline. So there we have it. So I think that's everything. Um, once again, I can't encourage you enough to just take your time you know, follow my directions, just practice, 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 you know, um, no stress, no right, no wrong. There are no mistakes. It's all handmade paper, just various degrees of it. It all can be used. It's all is something that you can be proud of as you're developing a new skill. Um, for those of you who may have already do paper, it's an opportunity to maybe to reconnect with it and hang out. Um, with me in this process, but yeah, it is, it, it's one of those things, just go easy and enjoy yourself. And like, I, I'll tell you this over and over again, I've been making it for more than 30 years. So I can make it look a little easy and it's not difficult, but it does take some practice. And once you get it, it's like riding a bike. You'll always be able to make paper. You'll get that. You'll get that little snapping. You'll get that little technique that helps it to release. But right now, just keep on practicing and just enjoy it. And every little piece you make, whatever hole it may have in it, whatever little ripple it may have in it, embrace it. Embrace it. It's wabi-sabi. <laughs> and we love wabi-sabi. So embrace it. Let it dry. Take it off the pillow, Put it in your stash and be prepared to use it in your mudlarkies cards, your other, you know, um your other collages and books and other projects that you may be working on with or without me. So there you have it. And be back next week for another session. Um, haven't decided exactly which paper I'm going to make, but we'll, we'll be making something. So um, until then, please thumb up the video. If you enjoyed this content, it helps to push it out because we really want to build this paper making and mudlarking community. How fun is this? And everyone who stumbles upon that's new and says, oh my God, where have you been? I love it. I'm binging on you and everything like that. Those are the people that we want to bring into our community, right? So, you, love, you know, thumb in the video up and everything lets YouTube know that you like it. When you comment, they know that you like it and they'll push it out and just show it to more people. So 
enjoy yourselves. Um, love you all. And until next week, from my studio to yours, have lots of fun creating. And um, I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.